In today's video, I want to take you guys through five newly announced PlayStation 4 games. These games might have gone under your radar quite a bit as they aren't any big budget titles or games that have gotten a gigantic marketing push, but nonetheless, I found them interesting and I thought I would bring them to you guys. So without further ado, let's just get right into this. And kicking things off, I want to go over the 80s themed story driven action RPG in Kingdom of the Night. Only a day since the campaign has been created, $5,609 has already been funded and they're only looking for a $10,000 goal, so it's not even too much. There's a lot to get into with this game, however, it's got an awesome old school look. Kingdom of Night is an 80s themed isometric story driven action RPG with an expansive interconnected map and open ended quest system. It's a game about coming of age, cosmic horror, and true love. The player takes control of John as his adventure leads him through an hour by hour experience of what may be everyone's last night on earth. He will encounter unearthly evils, demon lords, afflicted townsfolk, high school bullies, and a torrent of engaging serial like side stories all nested in a larger than life fantasy that brings the ultimate evil to a neighborhood near you. Choose your class, battle nightmarish creatures, customize your abilities, collect unique items and equipment in order to infiltrate the massive lairs of the demon lords and take on apocalyptic boss battles at their very centers. The game is set in the 1980s in the small town of Watford, Arizona. A strange cult has been working late hours to contact the great beyond. In their ignorance, they have made contact with the ancient evil. Now, after waiting for patient millennia, the demon lord Baphomet has stepped through their gate and into their world. In order to remain on earth, Baphomet must take an earthly bride before the sun rises the demon king has set his evil eye on your neighbor. Crashing through her window in the dead of night, he spirits her away to his fortress. With mere hours to complete the perverse ritual of demonic wedding, Baphomet hides above the town, secure behind the protection of his demon general. Now in the twilight hours before dawn, while the dead rises from their graves and demons wreak havoc in the streets, you must unseat the generals from their demonic strongholds and pursue Baphomet into his fortress to rescue Ophelia before it's too late. So this is a game with a really zany plotline. However, it's zany in a good sense, and with the style of game, it's going for an old school look, a coming of age story, I actually think there's quite a bit of potential here. Again, the game is being funded right now through Kickstarter. It's estimating a release of October 2020, but a lot of times with these Kickstarter games that are a long ways away, they do take a little while to actually get released and they want to put out the best product possible so you can understand it from that standpoint. I'll leave a link to the Kickstarter in the description box down below if you want to fund yourself. If you pledge $25 or more, you do get a digital copy of the game on your platform of choice, so that's something to note. $40 or more will get you a digital copy of the game, the digital soundtrack, and a digital copy of the art book and source book. And then they also have other tiers going as high as $1,000. I'm assuming the majority of you guys don't want to go that route, but nonetheless, link will be in the description box down below. Next up, The Walking Dead has wrapped up, but how about this? Skybound Games is putting out The Walking Dead, the Telltale Definitive series, and that's coming this September. This is a compilation with all of the seasons and many upgrades, and among these are graphical improvements and making of, like, bonus features. The game is available physically for pre-order on Skybound's official shop, and there are different collector's pack to choose from for the physical edition. They've got the Protectors Pack, which includes the School for Troubled Youth shirt, Clementine and Lee pins, Kenny Cap, a Clementine nesting doll, and a Disco Broccoli plush. The Guardian Pack knocks up the price all the way to $250. That comes packed in a box with gold stamp signatures from the Still Not Bin team. Includes all items from Protector Edition, plus Clementine and Lee figurines and Clementine art pins from comic book artist Eric. And lastly, then you've got the Signature Pack, which is $350. That's already out of stock, so I'm not even going to go into that, and it's $350. So yes, while it's out of stock, I assume a lot of our viewers that are on a budget wouldn't be interested in that. But nonetheless, we'll leave a link in the description box down below for more information. The Walking Dead, the final season, did wrap up. Some people were a little bit disappointed by the ending, but nonetheless, it was good to see that the series was able to come to a definitive conclusion. Considering that this is one of the most influential story-driven games of the last decade, I don't think it's hyperbolic at all to say that. The notion of it ending without a proper conclusion just would have been very depressing. Glad to see it finishing up. And now we've got this definitive series with all the other seasons. If you're looking to get into the series for the first time, this might not be a bad buy. Next up, I wanted to highlight a 16-bit party fighting game in Super Slime Arena. That'll be coming to the PlayStation 4 later in 2019, and here's an overview of this multiplayer fighting game. Super Slime Arena is a multiplayer party fighting game embracing equal parts accessibility and chaos. Every slime has a unique attack, and every attack is a one-hit KO. Every time your slime gets KO'd, you respawn as a different character. True mastery demands understanding of 32 different slimes with unique qualities, and learning how their abilities interact in over a thousand possible matchups. The game game touts that you can play on 12 unique stages and 5 different game modes, dive into the chaotic action of the shuffle mode, or carefully consider each matchup while picking and counterpicking slimes for elimination mode, explore the wilds of the rainbow jungle, 
ricochet off walls in Lucky Neko Pinball, or fight between high-speed trains at Slime Station, enjoy handmade 16-bit pixel art backgrounds and an original retro-inspired soundtrack from various artists, and you'll be able to fight with all of your friends and all of your contenders enter the arena using nearly any controller from retro to modern, fight sticks or flight sticks, plastic guitars, and bongas. Inspired by a plethora of 90s Japanese console games and modern party game classics, Super Slime Arena seeks to capture the unique joy of playing together in a friendly and approachable fighting game for everyone. We don't have a release for this one, but it looks to be a pretty charming fighting game. It comes sometime in 2019. Next up, we also have the action platformer in Astalon Tears of the Earth. We got a new trailer for that game, and honestly, visually, this game looks really good. Harkens back to games of, say, the Super Nintendo days. And this game centers around three explorers as they wander through a post-apocalyptic desert to find a way to save the people in their village. A dark, twisted tower has been pushed up from the depths of Earth, but does it hold the answers they seek? Astalon Tears of the Earth is touted as a love letter to games of the 80s, but what may seem like a simple action platformer has several surprises under the hood. Use the unique skills and personalities of three different characters to explore an evil tower, defeat terrible monsters, find powerful items, and solve puzzles reaching new heights in the tower with every attempt. Strengthen your party and change the rules by embracing death and discover the countless secrets of the world of Astalon. The game touts beautifully detailed and authentic looking pixel art inspired by the 8-bit era of video games character art by Ryusuke Mita, creator of the manga Dragon Half, a chiptune soundtrack by video game music group Killscreen, hundreds of rooms, countless hours of challenging exploration await you, collect a variety of magical items that will bestow your three characters with new abilities. Again, Aslan Tears of the Earth hits the PlayStation 4 sometime in 2019. And lastly, we have a new Metal Max game that is in development and it should be revealed next summer. Now, we don't know much about this game. A Twitter account for Metal Max Xeno revealed that a brand new Metal Max game is currently in development to celebrate the Japanese one-year anniversary of the release of Xeno. Comments from director Hiroshi Miyoka and producer Juntaro Kuno were published in two different tweets. Metal Max Xeno was released stateside a little while ago, and while it wasn't the best JRPG I ever played, considering it was released at a budget price point, I found it to be decent enough, and to see more of these niche JRPGs come over stateside, hey, that's something I can get behind. Again, we don't know much about this, but we should find out more information about what's in the works this summer, so stay tuned for that. And that's gonna conclude this video. Again, not the biggest budget games in the world, however, I feel like Kingdom of Night could end up surprising a lot of people. For those of you that never played The Walking Dead, now you've got the definitive series, Super Slime Arena looks to be a pretty charming fighting title. For those of you that like old school platformers, Astalon Tears of the Earth looks cool, and then we have a new Metal Max game in development. We'll keep you posted on all of these titles, and that's gonna conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.